I see you in my house, Pini. Welcome to another video. Hey, I have my cup of tea in my Harvest Moon mug. It's actually the wife's, but I steal it all the time. I think you got that from like a special edition from the UK or something. I think she got it from like Poundland or something for like 20 quid. Like it had the game, a farmhouse, all this stuff. It's a shame she couldn't bring it. A little switch in the video. And we've got, just so they know in the thumbnail that it's an Australian video. Good old hat. I'm sick at the moment. Might take a couple days off of work. May not be able to because I've got a three week holiday coming up. That's a story for another time because this is a very focused video. Not well produced, but very focused. This is my problems with EB Games right now. Back in January, they announced uh, 30 stores would be closing down, including the one closest to myself, which was in Anala. I live in the Oxley area. <coughs> and Anale is my closest store. I didn't go there a whole lot just because I don't visit EB Games a whole lot, but that's something to talk about later on in the video. They closed that store, they had like this really weird thing, like the uh, the YOLO swag sale, it was like spray painted and shit I saw in photos. I honestly did not go to the store closing, like the liquidation, because I had been there like a month earlier and there was nothing I wanted there then, so... Stuff I didn't want being 20% off didn't entice me back in. Although I do like Nala Shopping Center, they have a really cool Vietnamese like marketplace area. I might do a video there one day, although I could probably get my phone stolen. Alright, these are 10 reasons why... It isn't like why EB Games is failing, even though they are failing. It's just 10 of the reasons I could think of of why I don't really shop there anymore and why I think other people don't shop there anymore, and why if they go out of business, it's going to be pretty bad for gamers as a whole in Australia. So, I have these in order of from 10 to 1. We'll start from number 10 go to number 1, because I think number 1 is the most important one, even though people will say it's not. As someone who has worked in like multiple areas of retail, I can confirm that this is something that is kind of impacting everything and whether a business changes to like accommodate that and whether they change to accommodate it well is going to be a big, big difference in the future for shit in, in the current. Five years ago you could have said it was in the future, now it is current. So we have number 10. Uh, the stores all look outdated, man. You know, you have a few EB games that are newly renovated or they're nice new stores and they look pretty good. But you have a lot of stores that have the same look as when they were built. You know, a lot of these stores were built in the 90s or early 2000s and they've not really changed since then. They have the same kind of layout, you can feng shui, change it all you want, but it always looks the same. Stuff is kind of hard to find. It's very crammed in there. Even though there's not a whole lot of video games anymore, the shelves are very crammed with like collectibles and stuff. Like, it's always a case of they have stuff flowing out of their store. They have so much stuff, you know? Uh, there's no walking space. If there is someone in the store, you cannot walk past them. You have to wait for them to move, or you have to ask them kindly to move out of the way. You can't get past. These stores are tiny. Now there are a couple of stores near me, like there's one in Wynnum that's a big store. But for the most part, these are very small stores, very small retail spaces, like... Considering they're such a big company, they usually have the smallest retail space in any um, given shopping center I've noticed. Like, I can't... The only ones I could think of that might have a smaller space are like the restaurants, but they're like... They don't need to accommodate customers being inside of them because they have tables outside of their store area. Very little room. There's no like ordinance in there. It's very hard to find what you're looking for. Like if you walked into one EB Games, the layout is completely different from another one. 
you could walk into an EB Games and just wonder, where's the PlayStation 3 games? PlayStation 3 games are a small section now, we're gonna get into that later, but you can't just immediately see it. In most other stores, retail stores, if I go into a Coles, I can look above the aisle and it will say what things will be in this aisle. You know, like eggs, sugar, flour, stuff like that. You go into an EB Games, it's a fucking wild west. You, you don't know what's in there. It's hard to find what you're looking for. I used to have like a meme whenever I went into an EB Games just inside my own head, which was, okay, where have they stuck the PlayStation Vita games? Because even when the PlayStation Vita was relevant, they would usually only have 10 to 20 PlayStation Vita games. And there was no logic to where they'd be. I've seen them stored above the Nintendo DS games. Nintendo DS games could be anywhere as well. I've seen them stored like, with the PS4 games. They're, like, they're nearly impossible to find. So that's something they really need to improve on. Just like the overall atmosphere in their store. And they need to like... I know money's tight right now, but... You need to spend money to make money. And no one's going into these stores if they look old and outdated. Uh, number 9... This one probably should have been higher. Other stores have far more selection at far better prices. Examples are here, uh, CEX, and cash converters. And now cash converters for a foreign viewer, they might be thinking, why are you saying cash converters? That's just a pawnbroker. Well, cash converters is actually the second biggest. Maybe the... No, because of how many stores they are, they are definitely the second biggest. They are the second biggest retailer of second-hand games in this nation in this great southern land, which is weird to think about because there's no other second-hand game stores except EB Games. And CEX is there, but there are so few locations. Yeah, they're only in major cities right now, there are no computer exchanges outside of these areas. I think there's one in, um... Where is it? I don't remember where it is. There's a couple out in the sticks, but <coughs> there's very little of them so far. It's not like the UK where CEX is in every town, every city, every um, kind of area. There's very few of them here, and as such, it can be hard to find what you're looking for in these places. But even they was only, I think, 20, about 20 locations in the country. I would wager to say they have a far bigger selection of used games than EB Game Stores, which is weird to think about. And it's just because CEX, they stock more. I don't know why EB Games isn't taking in more of the Wii, PS3, DS stuff. There is still a market for it. But CEX and Cash Converters are really beating them out of And they have far better prices. I go into an EB Games, they've had this 4 for $20 sale on PS3 and Xbox 360 games for the last year, but it's all junk. Just yesterday I went into one just for like mental research for the video, and I saw a game I want. Uh, Lord of the Rings Aragorn's Quest for the PlayStation 3. It's an action game, I've been wanting it for my collection, I want to give it a play. <coughs> it was a bad condition copy, the artwork was messed up. And it was $18, or 4 for 20 So I thought, okay, if I can find three other games, I'll buy it and the three other games for 20 bucks. There were no other games I wanted in the whole store. Everything else was like... Either Wii Shovelware, or if it was on the Xbox 360, it was like Halo 3, Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect, you know. Good games, but the games you see everywhere, the games that no one really wants anymore. Like, the games that everyone already has. That's why there are so many copies of these, because no one's buying these ones, because everyone already has them. So, other stores have a better selection at better prices. Number eight, there's nothing really there that would want to make you go in and look around. You know, the stock's always the same, though. If I go into a cash converters, one of the main reasons I go into there is because they might have new stock. New stock at a good deal, I might find a hidden gem that I really that I've been looking for. The same with CEX, you could go in and find 
like a cool game that you forgot existed and you're like, oh man, I remember that one, and you grab it. At EB Games, it's like, it's always the same stuff. The PS4 stuff, always the same. Wii U, always the same. Switch, always the same. It's like, the thrill of going in and having a browse isn't there anymore. One of the big things that help clothing stores is the thought that you could go in and find like this cool deal on a shirt or something that you didn't know existed. And it's like, you go in and you're like, oh man, I have to have that. You know, there's nothing in EB Games that makes you say that. Nothing. Even new game releases, even if you see it and you go, oh, I kind of want that. The price is so ridiculous that there's no way you would buy it. I saw this, like, shoot 'em up collection on the Switch, which looked really cool. And I saw Deadly Premonition on the Switch, which looked really cool, but they were $90 each. It's like, that's more than every other game on the system. There's no reason you would buy that. So, there's nothing that I would want to make a gamer go in and look around. Number 8. Well, you can't really go in and chat anymore either. Like, I used to be able to go into these stores and chat with other gamers. They would have events and stuff. Like, you remember the midnight sales where they would, like, set up consoles, you could play games there, and you could get the game at midnight? They never have that anymore. Never, ever, ever. I think... I don't know when the last one they did is. It's been so long. I know it was an individual store thing, but they just don't do it anymore. Yeah, there's no real reason why a game would want to go in. And number seven, and this one's obvious, then this one's been said by everyone, they're not a consumer-driven company. The staff know very little about games outside of new releases. I used to go in and try to just talk to them about stuff. They knew, like, they knew Ratchet and Clank, they knew, like, Jack and Daxter, they knew Call of Duty, they knew all of the obvious ones. You're trying to mention even something like Ico, and then I had someone who was like, Oh, I've never heard of that game. Like, you don't know Ico? You work in a video game store. But like, it's just stuff like that. Like, fair enough if you don't know random games. Like, I don't expect many people to know about Bat and Katos on the GameCube. I do expect them to know about Metroid Prime, you fucking know. <laughs> it's like... I mean, the people they hire, they don't really know much. They're more about the sales than the experience, which is just ridiculous. Anywhere you go in, you need people who know what they're talking about behind the counter. You can't go in and just not know stuff. And I know they hire young people, people who maybe aren't old enough to remember, like classics. But you should be hiring people who know what they're talking about. They're, I know for a fact that there are massive gamers who would love to work at EB Games. But because they don't fit the style, or the look, or the um, attitude that they want people to have, it's like, they don't get hired by them. Even though they know much more about video games, they're much better at selling a video game to someone. Listen, I know someone who could talk your ear off about how awesome Earthbound is. They could sell you into paying $200 for Earthbound just by telling you how amazing it is. But instead, the people they have in there, I don't even really blame them because I'm sure this is coming from higher up. The only thing they know how to do is come up to you, ask, hey, can I help you find anything? No? Alright, let me know if you need anything. And then when you're at the counter, hey, you want to get grab the game guarantee? It's only $3 extra. Or is there anything I can help you pre-order today? It's like... I want to talk to a human being. I don't want to talk to, like... A mugger. <laughs> Someone who's just trying to get money out of me. It's like... The people who work there are the people that come up in the street and harass you for change. It's like... Get the fuck away from me, dude. <laughs> Even if I have money, I'm not giving it to you. You know? In Australia, in the big cities, we have these people called charity mothers. We call them chuggers. 
they'll be working for bloody salvos or whatever, and they'll be working off commission. So they'll be trying to get money from you saying that the money's going to a good cause, when in reality, they get a big chunk out of every like donation that gets made on their behalf, I guess. Like every donation that they manage to get out of someone, they get a percentage out of. It's like it's the most predatory bullshit, and they do the same stuff with EV games. I don't know if they're getting a chunk out of it, but I'm sure their bloody managers are telling them that they need to be doing this shit. Because I've seen a lot of videos where they're where it's confirmed that in GameStop, former employees are saying that they would be judged based on how many game guarantees, game informants they sold. And it's just stupid, because it's like, you're judging a worker based on how much extra money they can get for the company, more than how good of a worker they are. That's just ridiculous. So yeah, they're not a consumer-driven company, and the staff know very little about the games they're actually selling. Oh, and this was one I added as an extra. What the fuck is up with only one employee being in a store? The store I went into yesterday, it was in Kapalabar Central, big shopping centre, very busy place. EB Games was empty, man. There was a kid in there and a worker when I walked in. But you can't just have a single worker in there. Because a single worker can't do anything. You know, I don't know if someone was out for lunch or whatever, but there should never be a situation where a big retailer... They claim they're the biggest specialist retailer in the country, so why does one of your stores only have a single employee in there? It doesn't sound very big time to me. What if that employee is busy with a customer and I need something? What am I going to do? Just stand around? That's not good customer service. That's part of what drives people away to other stores. Like at JB Hi-Fi, there's, there's at least a hundred fucking employees in there at all times. Even at CEX, there's always at least two employees in there. Most of the time there's three. Because there's, there'll be someone who can like do trade and stuff, and there'll be someone who can like take orders from people who are just looking to quickly buy something and leave. And that's the way it should be. You keep that flow going. Uh, number six, ridiculous launch prices. I know the margin for new games, the profit on them, it's not high, but $99 for a game that other brick and mortar retailers are charging $79 for, that's ridiculous. Whenever I shopped at EB Games, I used to be an EB Games loyalist, but even then, I would always, always price match. And if they wouldn't price match something, I'd go to somewhere where it was cheaper. Because I'm not going to be ripped off by 20 to $30 just based on greed, just because they say they have to make some kind of a profit on it. It's like, if you're selling something that doesn't make a profit, but you have to price it higher than everybody else just so you do make a profit, maybe you shouldn't be selling that stuff, you know? Because then it just makes you look like a bad company. And it's going to... oh well, it's not going to, it has. Like, it, it has made customers avoid going to your stores. And this is for used games as well. Their prices are all over the place. I've found copies of Yakuza 3 in EB Games for like 5 bucks after like a sale. They'll just be in the 5 for $20 thing. But then a copy of Mario Kart there is 80 bucks for the Wii. You can buy it online for under $40, but they have it for 80 you know, It's ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. They need some sort of a pricing system that makes sense. Just CEX has a good pricing system. Stuff is fairly priced. Generally, it's a bit higher than I would want to pay, but it's a brick and mortar store, and I understand they have the overhead to pay. So if it's a good condition copy of a game, I'm happy to pay a little bit more than I would off of eBay just so I can have the game today. But I'm not willing to pay forty dollars extra to get the game today. Especially when number four comes up, I will bring it back. Number five, 
predatory sales tactics that no other brick and mortar store still implements. I mentioned this before, but the rigorous upselling, game guarantees, and the underbaked rewards card that don't really do much. I remember when they introduced these over five years ago. They introduced these maybe when the PlayStation Vita came out in 2011 or 2012. It makes no sense to have a rewards card when they don't do anything. Other rewards cards, you know, you have a flybys, you can redeem your points for gift cards. That's how it works with every other gift card. You got a Qantas, like, a uh, frequent flyer, you can redeem that for stuff. You can get, if you save up like a billion points and you spend a million dollars there, you can get a fucking toaster or something. At EV Games, you don't get anything. Except a tiny bit more trading value. That's the only time I've ever found that it has some sort of benefit. So instead of getting like two dollars for something, you'll get two fifty because their trading values are already crap. Let's be honest. But there's no point having them if they don't do anything. It's gotten to the point where I don't even keep that card in my wallet anymore. I got to level 4 really quick because I used to be an EB Games loyalist, I would buy all of my new games there. There was always cool used games that I wanted. Yeah, you guys saw a couple of years ago, I was buying EB Games stuff all the time. I loved EB Games. Now I rarely go in anymore, because I just don't have what I want. And I don't even carry that card with me anymore, not even when I go into the store. I just tell them I don't have a card, I don't want a card. The only time I'll bring it is if I'm trading something in and I haven't traded anything in for like six months. Because I know I can just sell it online for more, or I can trade it into computer exchange for more, you know? And at least with computer exchange, you have that card and that's like, well, all of your info is on the card. It can show that you've bought something, it can show that you've sold something, it has your trade credit on there, it's like, it's a useful card. This one isn't. Uh, number four, and something that's really, really going to hurt them coming up into the um, next gen. Less games than ever, more focus on toys. This place should not be called EB Games anymore. It should be called EB Games and Toys. I know they have Zing Pop Culture. I don't know how they stay in business. I never see anybody in their stores. I I've never been in one. <laughs> I think I've been in one twice. I've never bought anything from there. There's nothing... I would want to buy in there. But there's less games than ever. I remember when they opened the Zing, that's where they have all of their toys and pop culture shit. Just junk. Like stuff that really should just be in a landfill or shelf filler. And fair enough, you can say this is shelf filler, but like, well, I can take this off the shelf and play it. What the hell am I gonna do with a toy? But the only toys I've bought is stuff that i found on the cheap, you know, super duper cheap. But I'm not buying like $300 statues, ever. But yeah, I remember when they opened Zing, I thought, this is a great time for them to, folk, to ship all of their toys, shirts, junk, over to this store, and make EB Games once again a dedicated game store. But they did not do that. In fact, it seems to be the opposite, where the overflow from Zing is now just coming into EB Games, and there's less room, ev less room than ever for video games, and they're just getting crammed. You know, these stores are crammed, they're filled to the gills with stock, but it's shit that I don't want. I don't know if, I've, I've heard other people in the stores talking about like, the pop figures and stuff, I know some people buy them. I would never buy one. Ever. And so I don't go in there anymore. And once again, this is my experience. So if you go in and you love to buy, you know, your bloody hentai figures, go for it, man. I'm glad you have, I'm glad there's something there that you want. But it's not what I want. And if I go into a place called EB Games, I expect to find video games. So less games than ever, far more focus on toys, and there's no excuse for this, considering that both next-gen consoles are going to be backwards compatible. I already had no idea why they were... 
downplaying Xbox 360 games, considering the Xbox One is backwards compatible. Like, they don't trade in Xbox 360 games much anymore, they don't stock them much anymore. But now that the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are both going to be backwards compatible, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to be backwards compatible, but retro games are going to see a massive surge in popularity. Bloody... Let's see. Random games. There's going to be random games on the PlayStation 3 that are going to jump up in price because they're backwards compatible on the PS5 and people who grew up with these games are going to remember them. You know, someone's going to see bloody... Someone's going to remember the game. Let's think of a random one. Someone's going to remember Spec Ops The Line and think, Man, I really want to get that. And they can play it on the PS5, maybe, if it's actually compatible. And the price for it is going to go up because they want a lot of people are going to want that good game that you know that they remember. But EP Games isn't stocking them anymore. You never you can find PS3 games there. You can't find any good ones. I guarantee you, you cannot find any good ones. And if it's backwards compatible with PS2, PS1. Well, there's no reason for them not to stock them either, because they're going to be current gen again. If you can play them on the current gen systems, you should be stocking them in your store. And people are going to want them, you know, people are going to want the original Crash Bandicoot, people are going to want Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank. There's no reason not to stock these things. Fair enough if you don't want junk games like Full Spectrum Warrior or... You know, Final Fight Streetwise, but you should have games like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> All of the games that people want, you know? You should have these in your store. If you don't, then how, how can you even say you're a game store? And also, the games they do have are often very mismatched. I work in a factory setting, and one of my biggest things that they keep telling us is every product you make has to be the same as the one that came before it. What we sell to the customer has to be the same every single time, otherwise we're selling them a product that we are lying about. If we tell them that we're selling them, no, I don't make these, but if we're selling them you know, a TV that's a certain size, certain specs, certain components, if they don't have those specs, sizes and components, we are lying to our customers and they will know and the business will take a hit because of it. So when you're always selling games with missing manuals, no artwork, scratch discs, you can't just say, oh well they're used, and expect people to accept that. You have to have quality control in the stores. If someone brings in a game that doesn't have the artwork, you tell them, hey I'm sorry, we don't take games without the artwork. And it used to be if they had a game without the artwork, it would be a couple of dollars less than the game with the artwork. But now that's not true, it's just the same price. Or if it's a game for scratch disc and your disc resurfacing machine can't get it working, you just gotta tell the people, hey man, I'm sorry, this is fucked. We can't take it. Now, number three, stop focusing on sales. Straight up. It's a meme at this point, they're always having a sale, always. I can't imagine how much plastic they waste putting up all those stupid sales signs so that they could catch your eye, and people look at them and say, oh, I wonder if EB Games is having a sale, but they don't actually go into EB Games. And when you get to the point that you're always having a sale, it has gotten to the point where people think that the sales price is always going to be the good price, and the regular price is the price that you shouldn't pay. So I would never pay a regular price for a game in EB Games. Why would I? There's going to be a sale in a couple of minutes. <laughs> you know? You gotta stop with the sales, you just need to have a regular pricing system, like one that makes sense. Number two, this is what a lot of people are doing to help combat number one. It's exclusive materials that people actually want. EV Games has a very big lack of exclusive stuff that people want. I know they do the pre-order bonuses, 
but people don't really want that. So I have this up on my laptop. We have Animal Crossing here, $79.95. It comes with a pre-order keychain. That's all well and good, but JB Hi-Fi has it for $11 less. Is a keychain worth $11, babe? No. No. <laughs> she just got out of the shower. Is the camera still filming? Yeah. Good. I always fear that it just turns off and I don't notice. That's why I checked it. Thank you. So, it's... You need stuff that people want. The reason why a lot of these clothing stores are still doing well, despite a lot of online clothing stores smashing a lot of them, is because a lot of them have clothes that you cannot get online. Or they have prices that you cannot get online. You know, if you go in and you find this pair of jeans that's like, it's, it's a perfect pair of jeans, you will buy the pair of jeans in the store. Because you can't find that pair of jeans online. Same with like a shirt, with like, an awesome thing. You're not gonna find this shirt online. I, I don't even know where you could find this shirt anymore. But you need exclusive stuff that people want. Fair enough if the game goes online later, but they should be paying these developers big, big money to get exclusive games to their stores. I remember they did that a little bit. They had... Grab it off the shelf. I remember thinking this was so cool when it came out and I thought they were going to do so much more of it. It had this awesome Song of the Deep Collector's Edition. Limited to EB Games. You could not buy Song of the Deep anywhere except EB Games from memory. Now you can get it everywhere but for a time this was exclusive and I bought it because I thought this is an awesome exclusive. I love this. It's an awesome game. It is an awesome game. It's numbered on the back. It's really cool. And it wasn't like stupid expensive like some of those collector's editions are. Yeah, you, know, you see the uh let me get up the last of us too here. Collector's editions are all the same these days too, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah, collector's editions, people don't even really want collector's editions anymore because they're more expensive and they don't really do anything. But here we go. The Last of Us Part 2 Deluxe Edition. $155. What do you get for that extra 60 bucks? You get an exclusive cover and slip case and a gallery of 200 pages. That's it. That's not worth an extra 600 bucks just for a steel case. Do they have one that has a statue? It's like. Seems like every game that came out for PS3 had a special edition with a statue. I, I don't think this one does. But you see what I'm saying? It's like, you need exclusives that people want. And people generally want games. That's all they go there for. Like, some of the exclusive stuff, yeah, it's neat to have, but you don't need it. What you need is the game. Look at this, Neo 2 Special Edition, $129.95. Why would you pay that? What does it come with? Digital content that no one cares about. Steelbook case and an art book. That's not worth $30 extra. And I can't, like, why? No one's gonna buy it. People are going to get the regular edition, they're probably going to get the... Let's see how much the regular edition is at JB Hi-Fi for Neo 2. The regular edition of Neo 2 is 80 bucks. So is that special edition worth $50 more? No. And no one's going to buy it based on that. So I thought they would make more cool, exclusive content. They didn't. Now they just sell exclusive junk. And it leads me to number one, and this is the main reason why they are struggling, whether people want to admit it or not. Everything else helps, but this is the big one. 
one, a strong industry move, and a strong industry-wide move to online sales. The PS4, about 50% of its sales is online now, on the digital storefront. It's just more convenient, straight up. A lot of people... Yeah, wife says it's true. A lot of people like to have the game itself. A lot of people don't consider it to be worth it anymore. It's the same, it's why a lot of people have Netflix instead of DVDs. They think, well, I could have the game right now installed on my system for the same price. I don't have to get up, I don't have to go out, I don't have to do anything. Sometimes cheaper. Yeah, sometimes like cheaper. Yeah, you can get a good deal on the online store. So it'll usually be cheaper than the physical game. And if you're someone who has Steam or something, like, EV Games has given up on the PC marketplace. They've just given up. Steam has dominated them. If you can get it on Steam for the same price, installed on the day, you can install it before it comes out. So that you can start playing it directly at midnight. If you're just a gamer looking to play the game, you're not a collector who wants something to have on their shelf, there's no reason not to go for that option. And... This is something that's a little bit different with other retailers. But a lot of retailers have moved online with a lot of their stuff. I worked at Coles for a bit, and something they implemented was Coles Online, where you could get your groceries delivered to you, or you could order the groceries and then pick them up from the store, so you don't have to do the shopping experience. That was a cool idea. Employed people, employed extra people, and it made the customer's experience better. EB Games doesn't really have anything like that. You know, they I mean, they do have stuff like that, but it's half-baked. You know, if you buy a used game from the EB Games online store, you're getting one without, a, without the artwork. Straight. It'll be loose disc. It's always the case. I've seen retro games in GameStop in America. People do like the online order. They never get a cover art or a manual. But it's always missing stuff. And people give CDX so much shit about it. So with EB Games, it's been going on so long that it's just what they expect. But if I bought, like, a thing of cereal from home and had it delivered to my door, if that cereal came in a bag and not in its box, I'd take it back and I'd complain to the manager. I'd be like, what the fuck is this? This isn't what I ordered. DB games, they've been doing it so long where they send you junk and you order online that it's not the same thing. Plus, most of the time when you buy a new game there, it's not even new, they've opened it. It doesn't matter that the game's not been played, it's been opened, it's not new. Something new is something brand new in the box with its shrink wrap. You know, if I buy a, uh, if you want to not call it new, call it X Display Model. That's what they do on TVs, you get a little discount on it because they're X Display. DB Games, they just still charge you full price. But it's a strong industry wide move to online sales. DB Games does have their online store, but it's so shit. You can't find anything on there, they don't have stock. I'm trying to find copies of games that I want, you can't find them. You type in Yakuza 3 and it comes up with bloody Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Ridiculous. If you're trying to browse for, for a game that you want, you can't find it because either they don't have it, or their search system is so messed up that it's not in there. I remember when the Wii was relevant, I would try to, try to find Silent Hill Shattered Memories on the Wii. I could not find a copy. Ever. It wasn't in their system. Not on the website, not when you went into their search bar and searched up Silent Hill Shattered Memories. If I searched up Silent Hill Shattered Memories EB Games on Google, it would take me to that page where the game was. But not searching on the actual website. And that's ridiculous. So, all of these points leads me to the conclusion of it really sucks. Because even though EB Games isn't a great company, and they kind of never were, if they go away, there is no big second-hand retailer to take its price, to take its place. 
ZX is still in its infancy in Australia, we don't know if it's going to really take off. It's got a few good stores, I'm sure they're profitable for what they are, they're very small scale, they're very... in many ways underwhelming, compared to their UK counterparts. JPEG Hi-Fi has very little used games. Nowhere else really sells used games, except for pawn brokers and second -hand, individual second-hand stores. Yeah, there are video game stores in Australia, but it's like, it's like one store chains. It's, they're not chains, they're just single stores. <sighs> Kmart doesn't sell games anymore. Target sells a very limited selection. Big W, very limited selection. Brick and mortar stores, they don't really have an interest in selling games anymore it seems. They used to be able to go to all of the big retailers and get them. Harvey Norman, Kmart, Target, BW, they all stopped the big game releases. Now they don't. And in reality, the second biggest used game seller in Australia is cash converters. And they're a pawnbroker. The fact that a pawnbroker is the second largest brick and mortar video game retailer, a little bit sad. If EB Games goes out of business, they're gonna be number one. I like cash converters, don't get me wrong, I grab a lot of great stuff for great deals at cash converters. They're not a replacement for a real video game store. They're a pawnbroker. People there don't know anything about video games. sucks. Alright. Is there any way to save their business? Probably not. Uh, it's happened to a lot of businesses. The move to online and failure to really improve. It's killing off a lot of places. And other retailers are taking their spot. People are much more focused on getting good deals now. People are focused on getting good deals and they're focused on getting good customer service, and they're focused on convenience. Those are the big three. And if you can't provide any of those three, then people probably aren't going to shop much at your store. Alright, see you at my house. Bid you guys farewell. EB Games is probably doomed if they don't make serious changes. And hopefully there's something there that can fill the gap. I remember when game traders went out of business, it sucked. Remember when game went out of business, it sucked, no one took their places. It seems like gaming in Australia is bigger than it's ever been, but game retailing in Australia is smaller than it's ever been. And that sucks. And the wife is drying her hair, so I'm going to help her with that. See you in my house, be you guys farewell, have a good one, and look forward to more videos in the future. Done.